All right, so today I'm going to be showing you the Head Framboy's method of extracting CO2 out of the air and actually making baking soda with it. And we'll be using this as a homemade scrubber. So in this, I'll explain the reaction that we'll be using and how we designed the actual scrubbing device and how we will be separating out the products at the end to be able to convert the CO2 greenhouse gases in the air into usable sodium bicarbonate baking soda. All right, so here is the chemistry behind the Head Lafrown Boys process to turn CO2 in the air into baking soda. So it's named after my friend and myself who designed the process. All right, so I'm just going to draw a quick PFD process flow diagram of how this is going to work and kind of explain what each um, what each part is. So first. Start here with a scrubber, and we will have an in. Let's call it air in. And air is about 79% nitrogen, about 21% oxygen, and then there's a little tiny percent that is other things. And in there, we have 0.0004. Oops, I'm sorry, not that many zeros. That is 0 0.004%, 0.0004 mole fraction, but here we've just got a percent. And that is how much CO2. So there's really not a lot in the air, but that's all right, because it has a very low solubility in water too. So how a scrubber works is you flow a gas in, and then the gas comes out. And then you run a solvent here in. In this case, we are going to be using water. Okay. And then in the bottom, you have a dirty stream. The dirty stream contains your solvent and whatever it will dissolve. In this case, we only care about CO2. There's going to be a little bit of O2 and a little bit of N2 in there. But the CO2 is what we are trying to pull out. And then out here, you just have an air out. Okay. So, after we take, we absorb some of the CO2 from the air by pumping it up in through and into the water, it's going to enter a reactor. In this reactor, we are going to have two main um, reactions taking place. So, the first one is going to be sort of how we got to this. So, we're going to react CO2 and H2O. So when CO2 and H2O react, that is the CO2 dissolving in the water. So it has a certain solubility. And um, so at 5 degrees Celsius, at one atmosphere, the solubility is about 4 grams, okay? So when it dissolves, what it actually does is it forms carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. So... Uh, if you know anything about acid-base chemistry, this can actually dissociate into an H plus ion and an HCO3 minus ion, okay? So this is important for the next step. What we're going to do is we're actually going to do an acid-base reaction here, and we are going to react the H2CO3 carbonic acid with sodium hydroxide. And for the purposes of this, we actually just used... 100% um, drain opener lye. Um, lye is just the household name for sodium hydroxide, NaOH. When this happens, um, we are going to basically swap one of the H's and the sodium. So then we get NaHCO3 and water. So this here is an ionic salt, and that's water. If you know anything about acid base chemistry, um, when you mix the two, you'll get an ionic salt in the water. So, this is how we get from CO2 in the air all the way down to baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Okay, so now that we know what happens in the reactor, we know that we have to have an NaOH stream in, okay? So, then after it reacts, we run it here to a heat exchanger. Um, in the industrial process of making uh, sodium bicarbonate, what they actually do is they run water into the ground, it dissolves the sodium bicarbonate crystals in the air, and then to purify it, 
they cool it down and crystallize it out of the solution of water and they use centrifuges to push it out to the outside. So when we actually make this process, um, we're going to want to do the same thing. But for ease of testing, today in the video, I will be showing boiling off the water because that's the quickest way to get to the solution, to, to get to our product. But we're going to actually want to cool it down. So temperature down. And that is because we are then going to flow that through a filter. Okay, so here's a filter. Now it's going to work as the water is going to go down. And then we are going to pump the water all the way back to the beginning. Because in this reaction, if you look, we have the here, we'll use a different color if I can figure out. We have the H2O here and H2O here. So water actually acts as a catalyst in this reaction, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to just keep reusing the same water. And one of the reasons that we really want to actually cool it down instead of distilling it up is because if we cool it down, when we bring it back over here, it will be colder. And the colder it is, the more soluble the CO2 is going to be because gases are more soluble at cold temperatures and high pressures. So we can actually use this heat exchanger for two purposes, which will help in the overall yield. And it will save a lot of energy. So then here, going back to the PFD, that's where we just pull out our dry cake. So a filter cake of sodium bicarbonate. Um, if necessary, we can take it for further processing. But um, if we do the right, the right processing, um, we can do it right at the plant. And we'll actually be able to turn CO2 coming in way over here and turn it into a usable product of NaHCO3. Um, so some ways we can improve this is we can use a different solvent before H2O. Um, the scrubber, we're going to We'd have to engineer the scrubber. The scrubber is the main part. They've used uh, certain amino, um, certain amines to actually pull the CO2 out. It bonds really well to it. And then the amines actually kick out the CO2 later and we can have it go into a high pressure system where it will be absorbed into the H2O. But for right now, this is the main process of how we do it. Um, uh, I'll be showing you the actual process. I'll show you the scrubber that we made out of a milk jug and an aquarium compressor and how we just boiled it off and mixed it with some household lac to make some sodium bicarbonate. Here is our scrubber that we made. It is just a aquarium compressor with a hose that is running to this here um, milk jug up through the cap which we sealed with some Gorilla Glue and there's a hole poked in the top up here so that it doesn't compress itself too much but there's still a higher pressure in here um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transfer it upstairs by unplugging it there and um, just holding the hose up so that it doesn't drain itself out and we will dump this solution into a pot and boil it off to make some baking soda all right, so I have transferred the solution into a pan and I am heating it on high heat to boil out all of the water and excess NaOH. Um, for safety reasons, I will be turning on the fan, but I have it off right now just because it is a little loud and for recording purposes. Uh, something cool I want to show you though is that you can actually see, to me, this looks red, but through the camera, it's a purplish color because the phone camera is actually picking up on the infrared radiation that the glass stove is putting out. So now we've boiled off most of the water. And as you can see, there's a film left. That there is our sodium bicarbonate. I'm just going to finish drying it completely. And then we'll add some vinegar and do a test to see if it worked. Here we have some residual baking soda in the pan to make sure that it is baking soda. We are going to use this white distilled vinegar and if it truly is NaHCO3, it should bubble here. And there we go. We did it. We were able to turn carbon dioxide floating in the air into baking soda with some simple chemical processing using lye that you can buy in the store. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video um, and for learning about the Head Lafram Boys process. Um, we're going to be working on this and trying to optimize this and hopefully actually be able to use this industrial someday. 
Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. I'll link my email in the description. Um, and we look forward to seeing what some others can possibly do to help improve this process. And we hope that this is the future of not only making baking soda, but also carbon capture, now that we can actually make something useful out of the CO2 in the atmosphere. Thank you so much and have a great day.